I've come from Lagos. And when I was flying, I couldn't help but think about the collaboration between Lagos and Kebi. And that is in the Lake Rice. And here we are talking about uncharted waters. So maybe you should change it to swimming in uncharted lakes. Um, Lake Rice itself is an uncharted idea. There was a visionaire and there was a visionee. And um, I'm sure that they will swim in it and make a good success of it. So before I start, I just want to tell you a very tiny story about a very young girl. Her name is Bumi. And she had a lot of issues. She struggled so much in secondary school having to deal with mathematics. And that killed her self-confidence. But Bumi was willing to learn. And she was willing to conquer this fear no matter what. And it's nice to tell you that she did eventually conquer the fear. And she went ahead and did mathematics in A-levels, ad maths. And guess what? She even went and studied as a degree mathematics in university. And here is Bumi with getting a prize-winning graduate in mathematics, something that she feared so much. Ladies and gentlemen, that little girl is me. My name is Koko Kinkube. And I've always been surrounded by uncharted waters. Um, I started first, graduated, and then went into, after graduation, I realized that I had conquered a major fear. And that built self-confidence in me. And that self-confidence has propelled me along the years to plunge into uncharted waters. But there is one thing to plunge. There is another thing to swim and to make a success of it. I went into banking. In banking, I did 12 years. Some fulfillment, but not adequate enough. And so that energy in me that enabled me to conquer fear was the same energy that I used to take the risk of leaving a well-paid job to stay at home and be with my children. I wanted something more challenging, but I also wanted to spend time with my little girls. But I was only home for three months. And so whilst I was there, an idea came up. Again, it was an uncharted water. And then I set up the first company called Interface Technologies. And it was also to provide security management systems and biometric technology. And at that time, it was totally uncharted because nobody really knew or understood in 1997, 1998, what bio biometric technology was. But today, it's all over the place. I did that for a couple of years, and it's still running. It's about 22 years old, and I have a woman that's been running it for 11 years. In 2005, I saw a gap, and I saw an opportunity in the payment industry. And what I saw was that the payment industry was largely cash. Payments were made in cash. There were a few cards, but those cards were based on magnetic stripe technology. And in the card industry, there was also a high level of fraud. I also saw the gap that most of these cards were being imported. And I also saw that there were no standards. So to me, there were gaps, but to me, there were also opportunities. And so the vision came. And what was the vision? The vision was I want to set up a world-class 
smart card manufacturing plant in Nigeria, serving Nigeria, and serving Africa. At the time, it was an impossible dream. There was nobody and no one to benchmark against. There was no one in Africa to benchmark against. And so I had to benchmark against the number one global smart card company in France. And they don't have the same issues that we have in Nigeria and Africa. But what happened? I saw the is, but as it can be. And that propelled me to set up a world-class manufacturing plant. But in order not to get into the details, as I said, I took a plunge into uncharted waters. I started with the end in mind. I knew where I was going. I had the vision. And I started focused on the vision. When, thank you. When I started, Nigeria was on magnetic stripe technology. I know that if I say in this room, how many of you have ATM cards, most of you? And I know if I say in this room, how many of you have SIM cards? Everybody that has a phone has a SIM card, and that's Secure ID. However, I plunged into the uncharted waters, not to import, but to actually set up a manufacturing firm to do chip and pin, which is a higher technology than Magstripe. In my first year, I made a loss. In my second year, I made a smaller loss. But I knew that that is where the Nigeria and the continent is going into, because I had weighed the gaps. And all of a sudden, the central bank mandated the banks to say, all the banks move to chip and pin. And guess what? I was the only company there. So, I basically controlled 100% of the market. However, that is plunging in to uncharted waters. How do I keep that water blue? The more you remain at the surface of an uncharted waters, the risk of competition coming to meet you and making that water red. And so, for me, the focus and the determination to ensure that we reach our goal was very apparent. So even though we were the only ones there, we were competing against ourselves. And how? Global benchmarking. Not looking at Nigeria the way it is, but looking at how it can be. How is it done in other places? What are the best standards? The thing about being the first to plunge in is that you are able to set the rules. You are able to set the standards. You are able to change the rules. But when the tide comes, it hits you first. And so when the tide came, tough conditions, difficult to do manufacturing in this country, of course we're hit first. But what? I get inspiration from adversity. I move on, and I move on, and I move on, and I swim on, and I swim on. And we set the standards. We made sure that we were certified by every international certification. MasterCard, Visa, ISO, um, PCI DSS, GSMA, whatever it is. Today, there is no difference between our manufacturing plant in Nigeria and any manufacturing plant all over the world. But why am I saying this? We're talking about swimming in uncharted waters. One thing that deters us from plunging into uncharted waters is fear. And it's very important that we conquer that fear. The uncertainty. What if? What if? What happens? Now, the resilience the passion, the focus and the determination on the focus you have will propel you to continue. And so what we did is that whenever we knew competition would come, the water changed from blue to red. 
But before it changed to red, if you look at that, we had plunged out again to another uncharted waters. And we just kept plunging and plunging. Secure ID, we started with, I started with a vision of banking cards. Then I looked at the plant, I said, uh oh, this plant can make SIM cards. So we perfected the artwork of ensuring that we spot adjacencies. Oh, it can do SIM cards. Oh, but there's nobody else that can do SIM cards. So another uncharted water. Okay, let's go in there. Let's set the standard. Let's get the certification. So if anybody were to come and join, they have to run at those standards. At the end of the day, it helps the economy. And then you look at, I looked at the factory. I said, this same factory can do ID cards, national ID, driver's license, transportation card, passports. And we just kept swimming and swimming further and further and further into uncharted waters. But as I said, there will always be tough conditions. But the thing is not to allow the tough conditions to rest restrain you and not to allow, you, allow it to restrain you from fulfilling your dream. One of the other things is, how do I do this? First of all, we've talked about resilience, we've talked about courage, but how do I conquer the mind issues that tend to limit us women from moving forward? A lot of the time, women are afraid to scale. They are very satisfied to be in that cottage industry. And for me, it wasn't just operating in a male-dominated space, but also leading in a male-dominated space. So as women, we have to ensure that we are willing to scale and get out of being just a small business, a cottage business, but think of the big picture. What can you do? What value can you add to this? As a, as a woman, the other thing that I struggle with is leadership. How do I balance and how do I balance having the motherly virtues and at the same time being a discerning business leader? Because you provide leadership for all, whether men or whether women. Women are sometimes scared of taking funding because they don't want to be indebted, you know, but how do I do this? And these are the things that when you develop the confidence to plunge into uncharted waters, it helps you to overcome all these fears. And that's been the story in plunging into uncharted waters. Today, we are still plunging. Because as I said, if I ask everybody in this room, how many of us have bank cards? We'll all do this. How many of us have telephones with SIM cards? But in three years' time, four years, five years' time, if I were to ask the same question, we may not have that many people here having bank cards because innovation has moved. And so what we're doing is that we keep moving. We're moving into digital solutions, moving into digital cards, you know, just moving and moving and moving. So with moving into uncharted waters, you just have to keep going. There is no destination for operational excellence. There is no destination, no end to the destination of operational excellence. There is continuous improvement. You've got to always continuously improve and improve and get better and get better and find ways and new ways and new ways of doing the same thing. So for me, what next? I know that for sure what I would like to do is to replicate what I have achieved in the next generation. I know that the next thing that I would like to do is to encourage women who are on the path of success to develop those hard and soft skills that would help them not only to succeed, 
but help them to succeed in a world that is increasingly male dominant. However, we plunged into it, our story so far. Today, Secure ID serves 21 countries all across Africa. We became the first certified plant across the continent, and we will continue to move on. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening.